Yeah, I was born and raised in Maui. My father was a, a Paniolo over there, Haleakala Ranch. And so that's where I first heard music from a very early age. He loved playing music just as a way to bring everybody together and unwind and de-stress. He would get stressed if he went on a stage. <laughs> but sitting on the back porch and playing, that's what he loved. And he would get together with a lot of his friends on camping trips, exploring the island. We go up to Haleakala Crater, we go out Kaupo, go ulua fishing out there, avid ulua fishermen. Um, and as soon as they get the bait in the water, slide bait, they cast the lines out and they get taco, they slide it down. They bring out guitars and sit around and that's how we uh, pass the time hoping a fish would strike. And so from a very early age I got to hear live music and I feel very grateful for that. And before I could even get my arms around an instrument, uh, I was listening like, you know, just sitting there on the floor in awe, just listening. From some of my earliest memories are of that. And so, like most kids, when I got to Makawal school, I picked up ukulele. I remember Bla Pahinui came for a very short time and he did some lessons at Makawal school. I was so stoked because I've been listening to vinyl. My, my parents had a record player and I'd bust out the, the Gabby band albums and just sit there with the, the liner notes and the album jacket and look at all the photos and think, wow, these guys are amazing. And to then actually get to meet Bla, and he was the nicest guy, and such a, so much aloha. He talked about football as much as he talked about music. <laughs> That's one thing I remember. Like right, hitting the right chord was like making a touchdown. I must have been about in fifth or sixth grade. That's when I really got the music bug. I started playing ukulele and uh, guitar, and I got into playing Hawaiian music because that's, my dad loved playing Hawaiian songs. He loved the cowboy songs with plenty lyrics, like Hawaiian cowboy and uh, Na Ali'i and He Ono, uh, sort of the tongue twister songs. But I got really into just playing music and I got captivated just by the sound of what was possible uh, instrumentally. So with my music, I love drawing on many different influences. And so I grew up hearing Hawaiian music and folk music. But then interest, I got, like most kids, I got interested in playing electric guitar and rock and roll and uh, music that was popular at the time. Uh, I remember going to the Wailuku Public Library when I was going to Baldwin High School. I, was trying, I really loved music and I didn't know how to study. I wanted to be able to connect with more musicians. I played with some groups in, in school and everything. And I started listening to what was popular at the time. So uh, everything from like some fusion, and from everything from Eddie Van Halen to Steve Ray Vaughan, uh, in addition to all the Leonard Kwan and Ray Kane and Sonny Chillingworth and all that. And a uh, guitarist came, she was from Oahu, and she performed at the Wailuku Public Library. Her name was Lisa Smith. She had studied for many years with Peter Moon. So her feel and her phrasing on, on with Hawaiian music was amazing, but she also studied for a very long time with Pepe Romero, and he's one of the world's great flamenco guitarists and classical guitarists. So that, to me, just blew my mind. This opened up so much possibility of what you could do. Uh, and so I followed her advice. I asked her where she went to college. I was just starting to think about that. And I applied for every scholarship that I could to get into USC. That's where she had studied. And I was fortunate I got to go there. And I, so I studied classical guitar, jazz, what they called studio guitar. So that's just to cover all the bases, whatever sort of music comes at you. So I learned how to read music. I learned about theory. All of that stuff that I wasn't thinking about so much when I was growing up, I was just playing by ear. And I'm grateful that I actually learned both ways because I used to be just a, like a parrot. I'd listen to a recording over and over again and just try to repeat what I heard. I'd drive my brothers crazy. It, with a cassette tape, I'd press stop, play, stop, noodle, 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 rewind over and over again until the tape got stuck inside the stereo. You got to grab a pencil and <laughs> straighten it up. Uh, and then, uh, so when I went to college, I was exposed to all this different music. And now I just, I don't even think about it. I just let it all kind of channel through me. And so there are influences from many places in the music. But if you look at just culture in general in Hawaii, there's all these great influences. The ukulele coming from the Portuguese, the vaqueros having their influence on uh, the slack key sound, and uh, the style of singing, the falsetto, the fado, start, so that singing from the Portuguese then jazz, the incredible swing era and all that music that filtered through 
on the 20s and 30s and Hawaii and all these different eras of music. Then, you know, getting into the era of late 60s, into the Hawaiian Renaissance in the 70s, uh, all the pop music. If you listen to some of those Gavi albums, you hear these great intros that uh, you can hear some rock and roll and some pop in those. So I like just letting the music just speak for itself and not really defining it so much. I think, I think if you just play music from the heart, if you just follow your dreams and what you're passionate about, uh, as long as it's, it's authentic, then people will relate to it. And I feel fortunate that I have many musical heroes here in Hawaii, and I've been able to meet a lot of them and share music with them, and I've learned from every, every one of them along the way. And I think the main point is to just have open ears and open heart and uh, really understand when you have the opportunity to share music with another musician that it's a real gift and to really not take it for, for granted and treasure it. I just feel gratitude for being able to do what I love and not, I never really had a plan. Uh, I just dove in and you know, and I just, you have to just live it. So every day I'm uh, involved in, in some way trying to be creative.